Hey y'all, it's Latrice Bartley with Purposefully Living. Listen, I just want to leave you with this word of encouragement. It blessed me and I wanna encourage you how I just encourage myself. I am in a season of what I call extreme faith. I feel like uh, the Lord is just stretching me. And I remember in prayer, the Lord telling me, I am building a, a different level of faith in you, um, a different level, it, just building in everything, integrity, courage, just I'm building. And I remember specifically when he was just speaking to me on faith, he was like, that that you've experienced was good for that season, but there's more. And if many of you know my testimony through the, the testimony of my daughter and my life being spared and so many things. And so I kind of reflected on that and I thought, Ooh, you know, how much more faith, Lord? I had a whole child, you know, but God is like, there's greater. And I'm like, okay. So with that said, yeah, uh, these deep waters can feel deep, like the choppiness of the wind I am feeling in this season. And so yesterday I have to give credit to my husband for this. He blessed my socks off. And I just want to share it with you as I pair it with what Lord showed me this morning. My husband came in and he said, you know, I woke up and the Lord began to speak to me as I was reading. And he gave me the, the two books that he was reading um, in the Bible. And he said, we're going to return to sender. I, that's what I'm labeling it. But he, in, in a sense, said return to sender. And he said, the Lord began to speak to him everything that the enemy is trying to push on you, send it back to him. He know it's his, but he trying to get you to accept it. Y'all, as he began to talk about that thing, that thing came real to me. And he just began to go through examples of how the Lord was sharing with him. You don't have to accept that. That's not yours. You don't have to accept sickness. That's not yours. You don't have to accept high blood. That's not yours. My blood covered it all. Like, you don't have to accept that. And so I remember my husband saying, you know how um, sometimes a package through Amazon or someone may be delivered incorrectly to you and then you go in and open it and you accept it and it's in your house and it's not even your package and then now you're shame you don't open the people package so you trying to figure out what to do with it or he said maybe it's just something that was delivered to you and it's in your house he was like what do we do you go give it back. It's not yours, right? And y'all, as he began to give this, it's like the Lord began to download to me because then in that moment, he began to, he literally, as he was talking, he just took my hand and he began to pray. He said, we send this back and we send this back. And I'm like, hey, man, but I want to encourage you today because that word began to stir through the night and specifically I was reminded of the authority and the power that we have in Christ. Yes, we have power. And in case you forgot it, the enemy has power. It may be limited. It may be, but we have to be reminded he has power, but we have authority in Christ that he does not have. And so as he was saying that, I began to think about the authority that we have, that we don't have to accept. We can return to sender. I choose not to participate. No, I'm not not going to murmur and complain. I will not, you will not try to have me forfeit my blessing. No, because he cannot take it from us. But if he can get you to back away from what God has said, if he can get you to open up your mouth and speak um, contrary to the word of God, that's what he's going for. But you can return to sender. You can let him know. Uh, uh. And think about it. I, I told my husband, I thought about even when you're in the store, you know how those people try to come up or in the mall on you and they trying to give you the perfume or give you the, you know, and what we say, oh, no, thank you. And we keep going and they know they still talking. No, thank you. Or if somebody come to your door trying to tell them, no, no, thank you. You know, you, we don't even accept it, right? It's like, no, I don't want it. That's okay. Well, why we accept the mess? from the enemy. Come on, let's return to sender. That word blessed me when my husband and this morning shared that with me. I was thinking about it and something that we had been praying about with my health. And I shared with him this morning. I said, babe, I kid you not in the middle of the night, I could feel like it's starting to happen. And what you said came to mind and y'all in my sleep, I, like I was asleep, but I was not asleep. If you know what I'm talking about. But I remember saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, like, like in my mind, I was like, I don't have to accept that. 
and that quick it left. Y'all, the authority that we have, we have to be reminded. Sometimes we forget and we just lay it down. No, who are you? In Christ, come on. We don't have to accept. Yes, suffering, we're gonna go through some things. That does not mean that obstacles are not gonna happen. That does not mean that we will not have trouble, fiery darts, we will not go through life y'all but even with as we're going through we have a promise god's word his promises are armor and protection even if as we're going through things we're not going through it alone he is with us he will never leave us nor abandon us and so i just want to encourage you return to sender and then as that happened this morning i had something that just i mean i'm just being honest like listen these faith streaks i just happened and the thing was causing like immediately almost like wanted to bring on a panic attack, like worry. And I remember immediately getting up and I went and just sat and I got in my word. I was getting ready to read Proverbs. And then it was like the Lord just said, mm -mm, be still, be still. And so as I began to be still, I was just listening to some worship music and I just sat there. And then before I know it, I began to praise. I began to lift my hands and I just said, God, what the situation was, I spoke the opposite. I said, Lord, I thank you. God, I began to praise you. I like because in his presence, what you're dealing with becomes minor. He is my, he is magnified. That situation is like microscopic. When we begin to open up our mouth and worship and praise him, it shifts the atmosphere. And I began to thank him. And I began to, I, it didn't mean I had to lie. I told him how I really felt. I said, Lord, this is a situation, but then this is what your word says. And you are not the son of man that you would lie. You're not a God that would change your mind. You like, I began to speak the word of God. So y'all, let me tell you something. As I sat there in his presence, all of a sudden I heard Psalms 37, seven through eight. And I want to encourage you with this as I end. And it says, be still and rest. Hear me and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. Now, because I'm amplified, y'all know I'm going to break this down, right? Okay, let me do it for you. Let me say it one more time. Psalms 37, 7 through 8. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. Be still. When I looked up still, I know you probably like the trees. I know what still mean. Uh-uh. It said calm. A lot of times we think still, yes, it does mean like no movement, but it also means deep silence, calm. Then wait. I know we know what wait means, but I'm telling y'all, y'all know I love me a good dictionary now. When you carry around a dictionary, you I just love words. But anyway, when you start researching things, you'll be surprised the different meanings. Well, wait means remain in readiness for some purpose. Because a lot of times when we hear wait, we don't see that as a term of endearment. We don't see wait, yay! When somebody say wait, okay, sure, woohoo, I got to wait. We like... We're looking at how long, what time. But when I looked up this definition, it says to wait is to wait to remain in readiness for some purpose, to remain. So in other words, how can you remain ready? Is it that you remain with your praise, with your worship, with a heart of expectancy, with your confidence that he that has begun this good work, he is going to perform it. He is going to perfect it. That he, you can bank in the promises of the Lord and know that they're trusted, y'all. They can be trusted. So we wait in readiness. Like, like what he said he gonna do. Go ahead and act like it. That's what faith is. Come on, act like it. Go ahead because what he said is going to come to pass. Then patiently, I love this. So patience, I, rem I remember in a season 
I learned this definition, but today is different. Patience goes beyond um, withstanding or bearing affliction. Normally it's withstanding um, trials or uncomfortable situations, bearing up under affliction without complaining or murmuring. But I like that this definition said, when you're talking about patience, it's standing fast under pressure with a staying power that turns adversities into opportunities. Let me say that again, patience is standing fast under pressure with a staying power that turns adversities into opportunities. So when we are patiently waiting, it does not mean that things are not coming in on us. It does not mean that we are not feeling pressure. It does not mean that we're not going through obstacles, but you in Christ, we can stand fast under that pressure. And then the power, the resurrecting power that is in us, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. That power allows us to turn the adversity into an opportunity. Y'all, that scripture blessed me. So I want to encourage you today. Be still. Come on. Be calm. Be calm. Sometimes you don't even need a response. Like what happened to me this morning? It was like the Lord said, mm -mm, be, be quiet. Be still. Be calm. And rest in the Lord. Wait for him. Come on, with remain ready, knowing that what he said he's going to do and patiently stand fast. Come on, let's gird up, hold your posture, you know, get it right in the spirit and lean yourself upon him. Now lean, I love, it's just simply to rest against something. When we lean something on it, we rest it against it. He said, come on, lean on me, rest on me. He's not gonna give away. We all know, everybody's probably tried that uh, game where you have your friend or someone and you say, all right, you lean back and they say, do you trust them to fall back? And it really do depend on who back there because you like, don't play with me today. If I hit this flow, when I get up, right, it's going to be a problem. But come on, we can lean, we can rest, lean on our savior. He will not fail us. He will not drop us. He has you in the palm of his hand. His banner over us is love. Y'all, that thing blessed me. And so as I was just meditating on that, immediately I thought about rest, right? Because in that scripture, it reminds us, be still and rest in the Lord. And guess who is our perfect example about everything? Jesus. Jesus is our perfect example. And so when we think about rest, the first thing is I was sitting there that the Holy Spirit brought back to my memory was Mark 4, 38 through 40. And I'm going to read it to you. This is what it says. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. This is Jesus. And they awoke him, the disciples, and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now they're in a boat. They go into the other side. There's a storm. Jesus is asleep on a pit low. And the disciples are like, Jesus, do you not? I mean, it's like serious to them. You know, they all they see is the water coming in. They life, they, they are scared. And they're like, do, are you not? Do you not care that we're perishing? And did you hear Jesus' response? But first of all, did you see what Jesus do? Jesus is asleep in the storm. He is asleep. Okay, I need y'all to get that. But then he says, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I don't know. I kind of feel like in a little ways, this ain't what the word says. But I feel like he's like, y'all been walking with me all this time. You done seen all these miracles. I said we were going. Like, you been with me all this time. How is it that you don't have any faith? But this is what the Amplified says. Jesus says to them, verse 40. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? It's just something about that line that he like, come on now, y'all know me. I need someone today to know that Jesus is saying, I am interceding on your behalf. Come on. Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? Y'all, I want to encourage you how I started out. 
Number one, return to sender. I don't care what the enemy is trying to push in on you. Life is life. And some things ain't the enemy. Some things just life. Life happens. But guess what? How you receive what life, what the enemy, what situations are trying to bring in is determined your help for that response. My mom always tell me, when things used to go down and I would respond a certain way. And she said, excuse me. And I'm like, but did you see that? She said, ah, you are held for your response. And I'm like, but that, she said, but you are held for your response. You don't have to respond because they do. How are you going to respond? That's what I want to say today. Like my husband said, we don't have to receive anything that the enemy is trying to bring in. We don't have to receive anything that's contrary to the word of God. How are you going to respond? I want to tell you, return to sender. Tell them, uh-uh, I, 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 don't, I don't receive that. No, y'all remember back in the day, you used to be like, talk to the hand. Like, listen, come on, tell life, devil, everything. Talk to the hand. Uh-uh, what does God's word say? And then after you do that, go ahead and do what Psalms 37, 7 through 8. Be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. Rest on him. Listen, go ahead and go to sleep. Y'all, do you know that the highest form of faith is rest? Think about that. Though faith, yes, is action, right? But sometimes it's to not do something. When situations are crowding in and, and, and life want a response, but yet you still. Why you still? Because your trust is in the Lord. Come on. And so you begin to just get a posture to say, uh-uh, I will not. I will not bow. I will not break. I will not. The righteous are bold as a lion. Uh -uh, I'm going to stand firm on the confidence of God. I'm going to stand firm on the word of God. I'm going to walk in the God confidence. Come on, y'all. Square your shoulders back. We are going through life. And those of us who are serious about following Jesus, suffering is required. We're going to go through obstacles. We're going to go through trials. And guess what? We need them because they are working for us. They are perfecting us. They are perfecting our faith. They are um, building endurance in us. And we already know that it is through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of God. So you know how you're going to develop patience. Them trials. Come on. It's a system. So we have to go ahead and count it all joy. But I wanted to tell you. When life get life, like it was for me this morning, go ahead. Go on to sleep. Go on to sleep. Now, don't that make the enemy mad? You get a phone call, things go happen, and you just say, let me set my time. I'm going to take me a 30-minute nap. It'll take me an hour-minute nap. You might not be can nap if you're at work. But, you know, I'm just go go eat me some lunch. Go get me a smoothie. Go smile. It's like, wait, come on. He doesn't know how to handle that. He wanted a reaction. But remember what I said. Mm -mm. I choose not to participate. Return to sender. That that you're trying to send me, I will not be a part of. So that's all I wanted to say. Pray and encourage you. Love you guys. Bye.